Welcome back to another episode of Fixing Up Our Fixer Up of a Sailboat in a hot and dirty boatyard in Mexico. So Dad's going up the mast today and let's get into it! We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Okay guys, welcome to another episode. This is just part of the process which we will show you in getting our navigational system up to date. So today's task will be removing our old, I think it was an old Furuno radar. So it is on a swivel mount up on the mast and it's on our mizzen mast and our cables run through a compression post in our bedroom. So hence why we've got the floor up. Down here are our old cables. There's our radar cable. There's actually an old network cable which doesn't do much and our spreader light cable. All right, so I'm gonna get pulled up the mast. I haven't been up the mizzen before, so it's gonna be a good time to inspect it. First of all, I'm gonna remove the cable from underneath the radar. I'm just gonna snip through it, it's all obsolete. Nothing's gonna be used here. I am gonna tie on a pull cable, which is really important I get this tied on properly and don't lose it. So I'll take my time with that because it's going to come all the way from halfway up the spreader all the way down through our compression post and out the bottom here and we're going to have our pull cord. So when our new radar comes, which is already here, it's in Phoenix, we just don't have a credit card so we can't hire a car so we can't get to Phoenix. But anyway, that's another story. We'll get that pull cord down so when we do get our radar, we can pull the cord straight back up to the mount. Uh, where the radar is going to go. I don't know what the mount looks like. It is a pendulum type mount. I'm just going to run over, have a quick look at the fittings and um, whatever else is going on there. I think, there, like I said, there is a network cable here. I'm thinking maybe they, I did find like a bullet aerial. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a range extender for a mobile phone, which I think they may have had up the mast at one time. Yeah, we'll get that out and get that out of the system and chase back a whole heap more wires. We are at the base of the mizzen and I have two cables before we start on the radar cable. They're like a, some sort of network cable. We're also doing the radar on the mizzen and we are getting another HF aerial antenna, which I'm going to mount on the top of the mizzen, which is going to be a uh, standalone AIS transceiver. Whatever they had mounted is this goes to the top of the mast and this one goes to our bedroom down through the pole. So I'm going to pull a pull cord through from the mast down to this one and then also we're going to have a pull cord from this one down to the base. So come time to when we get our HF aerial for the AIS unit we can run it through here the same way the pull cords will be there. So I'll get these out of the road and then I'll get up the mast, tie a rope onto this and get it down to Sarah. Hopefully that fits. It should go down because there's quite a big hole there I think. Alright, I'm pulling out the wire and there's the knot. I don't want to pull it off so I'm just going to be gentle here. Oi! <laughs> pulling it back. <laughs> Pulling it back up. Oi! <laughs> I got the string! That was the easy one. So that's our first pull cord, uh, which was just pulling the old network cable down. And now I'm going to get up the mast and pull down our radar unit. Our head unit's here, so the new radar cable will obviously just come straight down through our compression post in our bedroom and then up here and come up through and connect straight onto this. Again, this is an Axiom, so it's a pretty modern unit. The radar that fits it is the actual radar unit that came with this one. There is a few older instruments, the ST60 instruments, that don't quite, well they run on a, on a CTORC 1 network. So hence why I've got the adapter. So I'm going to be keeping these instruments for now until we replace them with the more modern ones. But for now we'll run CTORC 1 to the CTORC NG network. And uh, we should be all up and running. All that, a lot of that's all obsolete. That's behind Sarah there. These are obsolete. That's obsolete. And obviously our autopilot, we're keeping that. So it's a really old system. Um, it was like Rayathon or whatever it is. So it must be 30 years old, a lot of it. Still working though, shows you. Raymarine 30 years later, still kicking. It's not bad. 
All right, so this is the first time Lee's going up the mizzen. And Belle's going to wind him up. Our lines are really, really bad. <laughs> so he's going to have a safety line on as well and Taj is going to man that one. All right, he's suiting up. This is the bosun chair. This is a special chair that you go up the, the mast. It's like a harness and he can... Has that one got pouches in it, babe? You can put his tools in there. Yeah, we like that one. That's a Burke one, that's a favourite. We've had a few bosun chairs over the years and this is Lee's favourite one to work with because it has a I bag on the side. I actually like the other one. Oh, okay. He likes the other one better. No, not better. So I do actually have two bosun's chairs. This one came with the boat and I actually don't mind it. It's a, it's a West Marine one and here is really low where this one here is actually a lot higher. So when I'm actually up at the mast, and it stops, uh, we'll say the line entry stops here. I tend to be like just looking over the top, trying to see the top of the mast, where this one is a lot lower. And uh, yeah, it's just different. It's a West Marine one. I still like the Burke one. It's got the pocket on the side, but I think the other one's actually more comfortable. I should have probably put that one on. <laughs> Can't remember now. Start to go up. Belly's going to be the winder. It, She's so up for a workout. Breaks, you'll take the load, Taj. Yeah. Um, and then it, when I get, see how it's one's on one side and one's on the other. When I get to the spreader, you'll have to release it, and then I'll click it over onto the other side. We really miss our mast steps that we had on Catel, but that's so much easier when you hoist someone up the. The mast, they can climb as you wind, and whereas this Lee's just going to actually sit there, so it's all on Bella. Don't look up his shorts, everyone. He's got no undies on. It's free balling. And up he goes. He's in his capable kid's hands here. This is the smaller one. It's the mizzen. I'm just going to move the rope because it's wrapped around the wrong side of the rigging. Anyway, he's going to undo one of his ropes, his safety rope, and put it back around the other way. Important thing when you're up the mast, you know one stands underneath in case he drops something. So it might be a good idea to move, darling. All right, he's got his line sorted out and the kids can continue to wind him on up. He's just going to check it all out, make sure everything's okay, and if anything needs to be replaced or fixed, then you know what? It's probably going to have to wait, but at least he'll know. I don't think our spreader lights work on that mast, but maybe he can see why while he's up there. Oh, he's got some nice painted legs. Paint is oxidised on the mask, definitely needs to be demastered and repainted, but maybe when we look at the rigging we will do that, but not at the moment. Boring for those people down below. Oh, Bella's, do that again, honey. You gotta entertain yourself when you're waiting down the bottom. Oh, we're back, we're up and going. And he's up near the radar. He's getting closer and closer. That big blue thing you can see is the radar. The housing. The radar housing, anyway. There he is. He's got one leg over the spreader. He's going to feel a little bit safer up there now. A little bit safer. It is a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes when you're up the mast. So this is what we need to look at. We are going to replace our radar. And so we've got to run a wire down and he's also going to look at removing that housing while he's up there. All right, I'll leave it up to Lee. He's up there talking into the camera, so I'll hand it over to him. Sorry about the windage, but there is about probably eight knots of wind up here at the moment. Here's what we're looking at. It's an old Furuno unit. I've got to get the line. Here, that will go down. He just got the kids to pass him up his safety line. It's like a little 
little rope that he clips on and then he can't fall. And now he's getting the pull through rope up so that he can feed that down. He'll feed that down the mast on the wire to me. Okay, so I'm gonna go down now and pull on the rope or the wire. The wire that's connected to the rope that Lee just put on. And then we will be able to have a pull cord for when the radar arrives. Uh-oh. Oh, that's the technique. That's the way to do it. I don't know what I was doing before. It was not coming. Oh, stuck again, there we go. That's it, just use the thumb like that. Slow and steady with the captain's orders. Oh, I don't like it when it's stuck like that. That feels a little tight, like stuck. No, my technique's not working now. Uh-oh, I don't want to pull up too hard because I don't want this. This is what's wrapped around this. I think he's taped it on, but if he's taped it, maybe it's a little bit too thick to be able to fit down here. I can feel him pulling it back up. Reassess, and then we'll try again. Boat jobs, you need a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Sometimes things take a long time, but you know what's worse is if we pull this through, we lose that rope. This isn't actually attached to anything. That'd be way worse, way harder. So what we do need is a good attachment with the rope and this so we can get it all the way through. Otherwise, if it falls off halfway down the mast, it's not gonna be great. Captain's not gonna be real happy. It's stuck again. Yeah, right, I'm feeding it back up to Lee. Maybe it's too big or it's bunching up somewhere. So let's try again. Come on. That's great news. Uh-oh, it's starting to tighten up a bit. Uh-oh. Oh no. Hey, I'm just getting weaker. Come on, baby. It seems to be stuck there. I feel movement. Someone's doing something. All right, oh, here we go. Woo! Must have been stuck on something. Oh, yeah! There it is! Woo-hoo! I got it! A meter, it's about a meter. Beautiful, all right, we did it. No dramas, that's good. I think, you know, that was the biggest thing he was going out there to do, so it's one of the challenges. He got all the way through, so happy days. Next task is to take down the radar mount. So he's gonna hook it on somehow and lower it down carefully. And then I think he's gonna make his way all the way up to the top of the mizzen. And then I think there's one more wire to feed down for the antenna, so. Still a little bit of work to go. Taj has just gone down to set up the drone. He's gonna pop the drone up in the sky and give you a look from above. Hopefully he's not gonna get revenge on Dad. Lee has flown the drone into Taj before. If I can find the clip, I'll put it now, but we were in Indonesia, Taj was on a, on a flying fox. So, um, tell us what happened just now. Cut the drone cut through me. <laughs> Taj was on this flying fox up here and um, daddy got too close and <laughs> bladed me. All right, here he goes. You know stuff always looks better from the sky. Let's switch cameras and put it over onto the drone. So he's been able to undo the bolts easy, which is great because that could have been an issue. So he's gonna unmount the whole thing, bring it down, and then he'll be able to put the new one back up and it'll be nice and easy. So good news. The next few moments, this radar will be coming down. Slow and steady drop. And we're gonna lower it down nice and slowly. Slow and steady, Taj is lowering it down. Here we go.
there it is. There it is, it's down. And the next one to go up will be our new one when it arrives or when we go to Phoenix and pick it up because it's at one of our patrons houses sitting safely waiting for us. Okay Lee is still up the mast and we're just sending up some more pull cord because the other one is too short. So the next one is going to thread down is from the very top of the mizzen all the way down for the antenna for our AIS. We don't have it yet but this is preparation. All right, he's going up to the top of the mast. Ready? I think this one is about maybe 30 feet. I'll check, but I'm guessing. He's finished up there for now and he's slowly coming down. All right, he's unclipping. He does have an extra line that he takes up so that when he's at the top, he can just clip on with that one that he's undone right now. It's a little bit annoying because it sometimes gets stuck around some of the rigging, but it could save his life. So, you know, he's all twisted up. All right, he's got all his twists out of his line and he'll head back down. Slow and steady, good communication. Right. That's how we get a captain down safely. Can I just release that fully? Oh, well. Do you want to just feel the feeling if I just let go of my drop away? It's not a good feeling. <laughs> that wouldn't feel good. That wouldn't feel good if you got dropped? It would happen so quick you wouldn't even know. So how was it up the mast? We got our pull cables through, we got the radar down, uh, we got a cable pulled through to pull up the new HF radio and we've got the existing radar cable pulled out with a pull cord so we can put the new radar cable up along with the new radar. Um, I found it easier just to unbolt all the whole mount off the mast so I can mount it all up down here and then I'll reassemble it and then put it on the mast as, as a whole so I think that'll be easier. Yeah, it'll obviously be easier if we just drop the mast but we're not ready to wear the expense of the rigging fence yet. That's for another time. But ideally in a perfect world you'd drop the mast and just do all this on the ground. We need to have a float around before that happens. Before we all go cuckoo. It's a bit late for that. Yeah, I've had enough. I'm getting a bit hungry. Yeah, it's like four in the afternoon. We haven't had lunch, so it's, I think it's time to eat. It's not too hot today, which there was a bit of a cool breeze, so that was nice. It is starting to warm up here, definitely getting hotter every day. And closer and closer to hurricane season. <laughs> Good time to be in the yard. But not a great time to splash. But hey, a boat got put in today, so we're not the only ones, honey. Yeah. yeah. The old Furuno radar unit down, it's quite a big unit, and it was just actually easier for me to unbolt it from the mast. It must have had TAF gel used at the time, because those bolts came out really easy, but these ones are really hard. So I've got Sarah on the bar. I originally intended on doing this up there, but I didn't think I'd be able to get this off the mask as easy as I did, so it actually works out well because I can mount the new Raymarine on here. It'll be a different template, different holes, different configuration, I'm assuming. Polish all this back up, give it a clean up, and I'll be able to just bring the whole thing up and mount it as one, so it should be quite easy. But just getting these off, I'm just gonna hold this and Sarah's gonna swing on that towards you, lefty loosey, righty tidy. Yep. There was absolutely no chance in getting these off up there. I couldn't budge them. All right, stop there. Is that spinning? Lucky I just worked out. Is that coming off or is that spinning? That's super duper tight. And super duper tight for all you people that don't know what super duper tight is, it's just a bit tighter than super tight, so. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> All right, well, Sarah's just snapped like a 10, 12 mil bolt. But that's good. At least it's, at least it's free. Ah, that's our base plate for our 
time, which pivots. Oh, I would give it a little clean, but if we were doing the mast, I would have done it, cleaned it all up and sprayed it nicely, but maybe when we drop the mast at some stage, we'll do that. Run a little bit of acid over it and it's cleaned up all the rust quite nice. So I'll give that a quick little polish up to seal that up before we mount the radar on it. But there's all this flaky paint that's over this. Obviously we're not gonna paint it. We're just gonna clean all this flaky stuff off, just tidy that up, and we'll just leave it as oxidized alloy and um, put it back up the mast. Taj is gonna get onto that and clean this section up, see how he goes. It's got the wire brush out, it's a set of safety glasses. We just wanna say thank you to Doug and Meg. When we first got the boat, they sent us this Raymarine and they've just updated their radar. So they're sending us their old radar unit, which is pretty current. So that's up in Phoenix at the moment. We've gotta get up there and get that and then we can hook our radar up to it. So we've got the basic setup now. We've got our radar, head unit, wind, autopilot. We're all go and then we'll upgrade along the way. Because we are here a little bit longer, the girls have their earrings back up for a little bit because we're back and forth to Phoenix. So if you want to check out the earrings on their site, this will be your last chance to get those. There's only a few left and then that site will be taken down. Just remember to like and subscribe. That really helps us out. Thanks for all your support and we'll see you on the next one.